Present a company called Sonic Sonic Health Plus Sonic Space Health Plus one word. Uh, so I received this call at three fifty two PM. It was a six minute call. Uh, and I received a text uh, at 3.48 p.m. and the text, I don't know who the text came from, but it said, you receive a call soon from a private number to arrange a disability medical assessment for disability support pension. Please do not reply to this message. Okay, so I received that call. So, Sonic Health Plus is a private company. Uh, it's a. Let's go to Sonic Health Plus. I wonder if I can actually. Um, thing is my keyboard is not working because um because of the heat the keyboard is like frozen so sonic health health plus uh, it says there australia's first choice for corporate and community health solutions so let's go to them and let's go most trusted provider of occupational health and general medicine services okay so what uh, what they do is they are no, I'm not a I'm not an expert on this, but I found a document, uh, which is a document uh, published by the Australian National Audit Office, which is a uh, government entity. The report is called. Uh, well, actually, there are two reports, but the first report is qualifying for the disability support pension. The report was published on Thursday, 21 January 2016. And uh, let me read from here. The audit objective was to assess the D Department of Social Services and the Department of Human Services administration of disability support pension eligibility and review processes. Okay, um, so apparently the, the uh, government introduced some reforms to the legislation to 
make it difficult for people to access the disability pension, which is in itself like a problem. Okay, so anyway, um, what I'm trying to say is, so this, uh, when you, oh, sorry. Did he miss So, so what they, so what happened today was this person who called me uh, made an appointment for me to attend this uh, occupational assessment thing on the 17th of February at, uh, at this, actually initially they wanted to book a different clinic for me which is in another area and I asked them if they could change it to something else and we found one much, uh, you know, just uh, next to a train station so that would be easier. Now, some of the problems I have here is why do they want me to attend this First of all, I'll just come out and say it. I think this is all wrong. I think, uh, first of all, let me just start from a premise. I believe that people uh, in a modern, stable state, in a modern, stable, wealthy state, as Australia is, people should receive at the minimum uh, basic levels of income support, you know, housing, education, all of those things. So I, I think that's at the, so I disagree with the current government's policy Okay, so first of all, let me just stay, state my beliefs. Um, okay, so those are my beliefs, and uh, so I, 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 you know, right, but I have, but I'm having stated my beliefs. I'm going to try and uh, uh, address the problems I have right now in dealing with this. Um, just because I'm on social security benefits does not automatically make me a bad person. Just because I'm a social security reci recipient does not automatically mean I am less worthy of respect, consideration than other people, okay? The fact that I am a social security recipient should not be used to um, should not be used against me to undermine my dignity as a human being. All right, so let's let's just state that. Um, I had a job capacity assessment on. The 30 on Thursday, the 30th of January 2020, at 11:15 a.m., the it was conducted over phone. It lasted about a little over half an hour. I thought it went okay for the most part. Today, Friday, 31 uh, January 2020, I get this text. I don't know why 
it was it was very it was like why sent me a text it was like uh, out of the blue I wasn't expecting it and on a day when I already had a, con uh, a conference with the uh, at the tribunal so it was a very stressful situation um, so I don't know so anyway okay so I had, so this person calls me and said that I have to you know like like the center link or the, the, the referred me or they referred me to them to make uh, this kind of this assessment all right this entity sonic health plus is not a government department it is a it is it is a con the government contracted you know with sonic health plus to do these uh, medical assessments for it uh, and uh, as far as I understand, the person, the psychologist who is going to do the assessment is not an employee of Sonic Health Plus, Buzz Health Plus, but, but is in fact contracted by Sonic Health Plus. In this way, I believe, uh, the way I'm understanding it, it seems to me this is a way to show that the doctor, the medical professional who is doing the uh, medical assessment ha is seen to have some level of independence from the government, right? So the government wants to act impartially and be seen to act impartially so it, it uh, contracts out this Party, this entity, Sonic Health Plus, who in turn <coughs> contracts this psychologist to do this assessment. There are some issues here. What is the relationship between Sonic Health Plus and this psychologist? Because <coughs> because the place I'm going to is not Sonic Health Plus. I'm going to a different place. Um, so I don't know what the relationship is between Sonic Health Plus and this psychologist. Um, could Is there some prior relationship or arrangement between the psychologist and Sonic Health Plus? If that is the case, then uh, the attempt to create an in, an independent doctor doing the assessment is undermined, right? Um, let's say the if the government contracts out a an entity to do these medical assessments, because you see uh, the the government like they call this it they it has a tender or something and and apparently two companies were competing to do this to get this contract because getting the contract means they will get paid right so and and there was another company trying to get the contract to do this medical assessment with the, the disability pension but sonic health plus got the contract now Sonic Health Plus should not, you know, has to do its job in an impartial manner, you know, because the government ha wants to reduce the number of people getting disability support pension. If that is what the government wants to do, then obviously Sonic Health Plus also wants to make the assessment process more stringent so more people are denied right or it's going to be difficult for people to access the disability support pension um, uh, anyway i have some issues with this um because uh, um, because <laughs> one of the questions they asked me was um 
like they told me the name of the person, the, the medical professional doing the assessment, and they asked me if I knew this person. I mean, if I if I, if I heard about them or of something, and I said no, I don't know this person. So this is their kind of way of trying to ensure that the person doing the assessment uh, does not know me, and thereby creating this appearance of impartiality well in my opinion it does it doesn't matter if they know me or not the, what matters is whether there is a arrangement between sonic health plus and the psych uh, and the medical professional doing the assessment that is what's important not whether the, if the medical professional doing the assessment knows me but if there is an arrangement between them uh, when I mean by arrangement, I'm, I, I mean some kind of um, impartiality. I want a, a, a bias or impartial bias or partiality can be introduced by any arrangement existing between Sonic Health Plus and this psychiatrist, this medical professional. So I'm just, uh, I'm not saying that there is. What I'm saying is, how do I know? Now, here's another issue I have here is, when the government uh, brings the private sector to do the work of government, uh, the pr uh, you are taking a, a process that that it has to have like something that is public something that has public values like uh, uh, you know a government is a public entity it has values of uh, citizenship of fairness uh, of, of you know it, it, it has these higher values it's not the government is not motivated by profit the government is motivated to make society function, to promote law and order, to, um, you know, to imbue the values of civic, of what it means to be a civic, of civic mindedness. See, the government has those kinds of values. It is supposed to have those kinds of values, but a private entity does not have those kinds of values. It is motivated by profit. It wants to make money. So there is a conflict between values. Between yes, the go the government wants to conduct itself in a uh, they call it efficient manner. It wants to use the public funds wisely. That is that is a good thing to use it wisely. But the conflict here is that a private entity. Whether it's Sonic Health Plus or anyone else, I'm not trying to pick on Sonic Health Plus. I do not want to be. Def I'm not trying to defame Sonic Health Plus. What I'm trying to say is, when you bring a private entity into something that is of a public nature, the provision of services to the citizens, you know, the government has a a, a duty to provide social services to its citizens bringing public entities into this kind of there creates a a, a tension it, it, it makes the process it, it, it corrupts the power process uh, anyway so one one problem I had with this person today was they told me that the it is mandatory for me to have to do the medical assessment and uh, I I didn't know if that was true or not because uh, in my understanding the medical assessment is uh, like it's not a mandatory thing it's a choice that that the Centrelink can make. I had I had my job capacity assessment, but uh, you know not everyone who applies for the disability support pension needs to have a disability needs to have a medical assessment. That's not a mandatory thing. I can even show you. 
a, a quote from the uh, I don't want this okay this is a Huh. I'm, I'm going to request that it be conducted by video conference. Oh, so they sent me the... Look at this. Let me, this is from the uh, Department... Australian Government Department of Human Services. Look at what they say. If we assess your claim under general medical rules, we may ask you to attend a disability medical assessment. Not everyone who claims DSB needs to attend. We'll contact you if you need to attend. See, it's not, it's not a mandatory thing. It's a discretion. So I submitted a complaint. Um, you know, I might sound like a very complainy person uh, or I might appear to be very difficult but what I'm trying to do here is I just didn't think that they had a, you know, look at this, all right? Most of my life, most of my life, I, 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 I didn't complain. And uh, yeah, so most of my life I didn't complain, uh, and you know I just let things go by. I just let things go. But right, but at this point in my life, I'm like, no, I don't want to let these things go. I don't want to let these people get away with things. You know. um, The government contracted doctor can be a medical practitioner or a clinical psychologist. You don't have to pay for this assessment. If they can't, if you need an assessment, Sonic Health Plus will contact you. They may send you an SMS before the before they call, which is what they did. If they can't reach you by phone, they may send you a letter asking you to contact them. During the phone call, they'll book your assessment. If you need any help, like wheelchair access, don't forget to let them know when you're speaking with them. Let them know if you prefer an assessor of a particular gender to interview you. This may be because of your cultural or religious beliefs. Most assessments are in person at a Sonic Health Plus clinic close to you. In some cases, it may be by video conference. The government contracted doctor will keep your personal information safe. They must protect your right to privacy. What I'm going to do? I'm going to ask them. Uh, I can't use my computer because this stupid freaking thing that I can't use the keyboard. So I want to ask them to send me, uh, I want to ask them to have the assessment done by video conference because of, you know, look, I can go there by train to do this assessment, but, but I, first of all, I disagree with the fact that they want me to do this ass assessment. Why Why do they want me to do that? Why? 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 Why do they want me to do that? And this is like in that report, which was... Um, uh, done by the Auditor General. Uh, 
with the follow on this is paragraph number seven from the report titled disability support pension follow on audit this report was published on Thursday 29 November 2018 so recently So one of the conclusions is human services does not comprehensively monitor if officers are communicating the reasons for access decisions to DSP applicants in a timely and accurate manner. And this is another finding. Uh, Reviews undertaken, this is paragraph 8, reviews undertaken as of June 2018 have established that the majority of recipients reviewed remain eligible for DSP, so for disability pension. So, so the government introduced this kind of uh, change, uh, they wanted, they, the, the government introduced this, this reviewing thing they, where they wanted to review uh, DSP recipients uh, medical eligibility because they wanted to re reduce the number of uh, recipients uh, and even so what happened was the the reviews that were undertaken as of June 18, 2018 the reviews confirmed that they these people were eligible so boy, uh, Okay, so I want to read Okay, this is my complaint to the I, I submitted this complaint to Centerlink using the online MyGov platform. I logged into my account and I submitted my complaint. Uh, this is what I wrote to them. Hi, I received a call from Sonic Health Plus on Friday, 31 January 2020 at 3.52 p.m. regarding my disability support pension. The consultant calling on behalf of Sonic Health Plus erroneously told me it was, quote, mandatory for me to attend the disability medical assessment. They told me this was the normal next step and conveyed the impression everyone has to do a disability medical assessment. This is wrong. The Department of Human Services has this to say every day on its website, quote, if we assess your claim under general medical rules, we may ask you to attend a disability medical assessment. Not everyone who claims this DSP needs to attend. We'll contact you if you need to attend. End quote. Access 31 January 2020. The word quote may is used, not quote mandatory. Well, this is me. And I go on. I take issue with the way this telephone interaction occurred. In using the word mandatory, Sonic Health Plus conveyed the impression I had no choice in the matter. I felt trapped. It was a poor choice of language. The better way to communicate this message is to say something along the lines of, quote, Centerlink, in its discretion, has chosen to submit me to a disability medical assessment, end quote. It is not mandatory, it is a matter of discretion. I want to challenge Centerlink's decision to submit me to this disability medical assessment. I want to know why Centerlink decided to submit me to this disability medical assessment. Decisions made by government administrative officials should be transparent and reasonable. 
I should have an opportunity to challenge them. It is not easy for me to go to these appointments. I have a lot of stress and anxiety leaving the house. If I should be forced to experience these stressful emotional states, there should be good reason for doing so. I also feel invalidated by Centrelink's decision to submit me to this disability medical assessment. Do they not believe me? Am I lying? I had a conversation with a job capacity assessor on 30th January 2020 yesterday. If Centrelink thinks I do not qualify for the disability support pension, it should simply say so and not subject me to these humiliating disability medical assessments. And they are humiliating and, well, I should, I should write invalidating, but put validating, given they are about my mental condition, which is very personal. If there is no good reason to submit me to this disability medical assessment, I regard this as an abusive process. I want Centrelink to tell me why the choice was made to submit me to this disability medical assessment. I want Centrelink's reasoning to be transparent and open to challenge. I don't want Centrelink to treat me badly. I want to be treated with respect and consideration. I want Centrelink to understand the weightiness of requiring me to attend this disability medical assessment. I will say again. If Centrelink does not believe me or thinks I'm lying about my medical condition, it should say so and provide reasons and evidence to back it up. And I will then be able to challenge those decisions. However, asking me to attend this disability medical assessment is, in my opinion, an abusive process. Why does Centrelink want me to attend this disability medical assessment? I want to know why. Okay, now I'm sort of regurgitating and rambling. I am also troubled by the fact a private contractor, Sonic Health Plus, is being employed by the government to conduct these assessments. Even if the psychologist doing the assessment is independent from the government, it is still, and con it is still contracted out by, uh, by Sonic Health Plus, put my there, if I understand things correctly. This seems to me like a legal trick a bureaucratic check in the box. How am I to assume I will be treated impartially by the psychologist? I want these issues answered as soon as possible. I do not want to have to wait weeks or more. Uh, so that was my complaint. And in the following page, they asked me what I wanted, and what outcome I was seeking. So I, I, I write, please see the previous page for the outcomes I seek. It's the previous uh, stuff I wrote in the previous page, the online page. And about it goes to summarize, I want Sonic Health Plus to be informed that decisions made by Centrelink to submit DSP applicants to a disability medical assessment are discretionary in nature and not, quote, mandatory. I also want Centrelink to provide me with reasons why a decision was made to submit me to this disability medical assessment. If Centrelink does not think my conditions are severe or does not, or does not believe I am suffering from the mental health conditions as outlined in my evidence, then please tell me. If Centrelink thinks the evidence I presented, the letters by, uh, you know, quote, the letters by my psychiatrist and psychologist. Uh, I put is, but it should be are not credible, then please tell me. I also want to know what the consultant who conducted my job capacity assessment on 30th January 2020 at 11.15 a.m. told Centrelink. I want a copy of that report so I can evaluate it. And I want an apology from Centrelink. I put from, it should be for treating me in this manner. An abuse of process. <laughs> yes, I keep on saying that. See my complaint for more on why I consider this decision to submit me to a disability medical assessment an abuse of process. Yeah, why did they, why, if they did a job capacity assessment over the phone, why do they want me to do this medical assessment? Why? Can, can someone explain to me, I just had a job capacity assessment over, over half an hour on the phone with a psychologist Who's, who's, who's also like an independent psychologist, supposed to be. And now why do they want me to do this? Why? 
I want to tell, I want them to, this is my complaint, is that what if, what if there's a person who's doing, who's ma the person who's making these decisions to say, okay, we want this person to do this assessment, shouldn't they be held to account? I mean, if someone says, okay, we want this person uh, to go to this place to do this interview, you're, you're, you're subjecting that person to an onerous task. And in my case, it, it's especially onerous because I don't like talking to people. I, I mean, I don't mind talking to people. I don't like, well, I have, you know, I don't want to, I don't like leaving the house. I don't want to have to go to this interview. Look, I'm getting emotional here. My mental health is my mental health, okay? When I say something, I want people to believe me. I don't want to go and have to prove the truth of what I'm saying. I want people to believe me, okay? I just want people to believe what I'm saying. So asking me to go to this psychologist and prove my mental illness is humiliating. It's invalidating and, and uh, it's also traumatizing. That I know that the experience is going to be traumatizing because you're essentially putting me against the psychologist because the psychologist is working for this company and the company has an incentive to I mean the government has a, uh, said you know we want to reduce disability claims so the company would has an agenda it has a an incentive to produce reports that um, you know that are going to further the government's objective so I mean you know it's not to say that I'm not trying to I'm not trying to say they can't do things fairly what I'm saying is there is a conflict of interests this is a problem when you, this is a fundamental problem that exists when you privatize healthcare or when you privatize the provision of social services because these are things that are designed to help human beings they should not be subjected to these market profit driven uh, forces these dynamics I made an appointment to see my uh, GP on Monday, the 3rd of February at 12 p.m. The reason I made the appointment is because I want to get a medical certificate because I don't see, because I have a, an, an appointment with my uh, disability employment services consultant on Friday and on Tuesday the 4th. And uh, frankly, to be to be just frank and to be just, I mean, I I don't know why. And another issue I have is, I I don't know who made the decision to. Um, I mean, my my application for disability support pension is still ongoing. I don't know why someone I should suddenly all of a sudden just go report to my empl employment services provider. Could someone explain to me why I have to go go to my employment services provider? Who made that decision? Why was that decision made? How does that uh, relate to my ongoing application? I mean, I made an application for the disability support pension because I have a disability. I cannot work. The, the application is still ongoing. How can the, while the application is ongoing, how can they, they all of a sudden require me to uh, go back to my employment service provider. That doesn't make any sense to me. Does that make any sense to you? If, if, if I'm applying for the disability support pension and my uh, application is still uh, in process, why should I, what, how does it make any sense to require me to report to my employment services provider on February 4th. You know what, you know what, how I interpret that? I interpret that as someone up there in this department, I don't know, maybe they don't like me or something, or maybe they just don't like 
people like me, you know, uh, uh, not just the race <laughs> I'm talking about, maybe they just don't like social security people, they don't like people on the dole, they have a bias against people on the dole, or maybe they have, uh, you know, they have an, in, you know, the, uh, they have an incentive to reduce the number of recipients, because they are evaluated, they use these performance measures or something, so the person in Centrelink has an incentive to reduce the number of successful claims, so See, that's how you're pitting me against them. This is what happens when you um, bring all these corporate profit-driven ideas which are prevalent in the private sphere into, into an institution that has a public function. There is a conflict here. People who work in public service, they should be guided by civic values and duties. They, they shouldn't be driven by uh, considerations of efficiency that are more suited to the uh, private sphere of the market. And I think the private, the market system itself is a, uh, it's, 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 everyone knows there's a problem with it. And I think, you know, yeah. It should obviously be changed. <laughs> we shouldn't have ca the capitalist system uh, as it is, and probably forever. Yeah, I'm not in favor of capitalism. So um, anyway, you see how the the capitalism puts people against each other. So I am seen as an an, an autonomous unit. I have interests, and I, those interests are in conflict with other people. Like the, 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 the person in Centrelink has an interest to reduce, has, they have an interest to, to deny my claim and uh, the person who's doing the assessment uh, is also wants to, you know, work with the government because they, they get paid by the government in order to, you know what I mean? There are all these different considerations. Again, I want to state uh, that I'm not try. Um, I'm not suggesting that Sonic Health Plus is doing anything um, unfair. Uh, I'm, I'm not suggesting that. What I'm, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that. I, what I'm, I don't have any evidence that Sonic Health Plus uh, has. You know. Has, uh, like, there is some kind of. Uh, prior relationship between Sonic Health Plus and the medical professional, the clinical psychologist, presumably, who's going to do my assessment. I'm not saying there is something untoward going on there. What I am saying is that I do not know. I do not know the arrangements that are in place between Sonic Health Plus and this uh, medical health professional. And the, the government uses the term what did they what did they use the term they use the term the, the government contracted doctor the government they did so the person who is going to do the assessment is called the government contracted doctor I don't know, that doesn't sound right to me. That doesn't sound like it, they're going to be fair. Why should I trust the government conduct, uh, contracted doctor? See, this is what they say, it's under what happens at the assessment. A government contracted doctor from Sonic Health Plus reviews the medical evidence you provided with your claim. They may contact your treating doctors and health professionals to clarify information about your medical evidence. They review your impairment rating and assess how your condition affects you. After your assessment, the government contracted doctor will write a report about the impact of your condition. They will then send the report to us. This report helps us decide if you meet medical rules for DSP. When I say DSP, it's like the, uh, the YouTuber. <laughs> You don't need the
if you're claiming DSP and you don't attend, we, we may, we may reject your claim. If you want a copy of your report, call our dis people with disability line. We'll let you know if you need to make a formal freedom of information request. So, okay. Yeah, I, I want to get the report if I go to this. Uh, anyway, so I want to contact these people. Sonic Health Plus. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying is um, <coughs> I just have any questions about like how the Commonwealth government is, is conducting these because it's not just me. I mean, even the Auditor General is kind of saying they should be more like the clear communication about access decisions for the disability, DSP, disability pension. Dear sir or madam, so you start, I think this one. Um, I want my appointment. I want my, yeah, okay. I want my, I want my, I want the disability. I want the disability, uh, the disability medical assessment conducted uh, by video conference. Part uh, I suffer from social anxiety. It is not easy. Leave the house. Take the train and uh, um, participate. In this medical assessment. I think I should mention that that is not to say that is not to say I am incapable of uh, attending the appointment in person. It is just to say I would prefer the assessment be conducted uh, by video conference. Um, because I do want to, <laughs> I do want to, I do, I do want to, you know, I want, I want to be fair. I want to sound fair. I, mean, you know, I, I can attend it in, in person. But I don't want to because it causes. Um, I uh, let me just say it. I, I do not see what could be gained by uh, speaking to the assessor face to face. I feel very self-conscious now. I don't feel like I, I feel like I'm right to see you. The same uh, could be conducted by video and it would save me a lot of stress, anxiety, and worry. Uh, 
Yeah. If you're in some kind of adventure, right, do it in front of the stupid camera. <laughs> it's been recording. <laughs> uh, today has been such a stressful day. Okay, this is what they say. Confirmation of your appointment for a disability medical assessment. To ensure disability support pension is the right payment for you, the Department of Human Services has to assess your medical eligibility. You may have already attended a job capacity assessment. The next step is a disability medical assessment with a government contracted doctor. These assessments are conducted by Sonic Health Plus on behalf of the Commonwealth Department of Human Services. Actually, that's not true. The next step is not necessarily a disability medical assessment. Why? Because let's go back to the document on the government's own website quote if we assess your claim under general medical rules which is applicable to me we may we may we may ask you to attend a disability medical assessment not everyone who claims this DSP needs to attend We'll contact you if you need to attend. All right, it's a, it's not not everyone has to do it, but if you read their e uh, email, it says, this, this is what it says. You may have already attended a job capacity assessment. The next step is a no. The next step is not necessarily a, a disability medical assessment. That's not the way to write it, because that creates the impression that one logically follows the other. This statement conveys the meaning, it, co it communicates to me that <coughs> a disability medical assessment logically and necess necessarily follows a job capacity assessment when that need not be the case reading the other document maybe i should mention that mm. I would like to submit a feed feedback and complaint regarding the uh, yeah, I feel self-conscious. Let me just write it down then I'll read it. <laughs> uh, am I being very problematic? Am I a problem person? Is this a personality disorder? Is this a personality disorder, people? Is this Regarding the statement below, regarding the following statement, I quote.
I'll just pull it there. And what? Why are you doing that? Okay, I'm gonna use the notes program. Let me see if this. Oh, okay. Let's see if we can do that. Okay. Um, this, these two statements create the impression that a disability medical assessment uh, logically and necessarily follows a job capacity. I don't trust these people. I'll just say it, you know, I don't trust government entities, whether it's private or public, I just don't trust people. I mean, it's based on experience, not just my paranoia. Uh, the I, the government, I quote the government's on the government's own website has this to say on this matter on this matter Okay, let's move this stupid link. Okay, yeah, we just quoted that. If he assists your claim, and am you not everyone who attends. Uh, okay, the as oh, I got a link, I guess, to that. Um, to the page where they can see it for themselves. Accessed! Uh, what is it? Is it 31 January 2020? I must have way too much time on my hands. Um, <coughs> no, because these are important to me, that's what I'm doing. Uh, <coughs> The government says a disability medical assessment may be required, not the assessment is not mandatory. I quote the word mandatory because this is the word which was because this is a word uh, a, a, a consultant a, uh, an officer rep, uh, a calling on behalf of your organization used in telling me uh, of my public uh, telling me uh, I quote the word mandatory because this is a word used uh, this is a word an officer calling on behalf of your organization used in telling me of my requirement to attend to attend this assessment appointment
please change the wording to accurately reflect the government's uh, statement as noted in the quote above. Uh, <coughs> the government, <laughs> should I use government or should I say sampling? The government, oh, this is government, has elected to submit me to this assessment. like to be conducted by video due to my mental health issues, problems, what's the, what should I say, Remember mental health problems. Please update me on these concerns. Please update, please provide an update. Please provide an update as soon as possible. Yes, sincerely. You know, one thing I like doing is I actually, I actually like confronting the people who I don't, who I have problems with. I don't like going behind people's backs. I rather tell, tell like you know, I make my complaints directly to the people I have problems with. I think that's a admirable thing. All right, so I'm going to send this email to them. I think this is. Uh, Look at all this wording. If you need to change your if you need to change your appointment, please contact the Sonic Health Plus Disability Medical Assessment Team by phone on this. At least 48 hours prior to the appointment. And look at this statement. You will be asked to explain why you are unable to attend the scheduled appointment. <laughs> look, look at that. It's like so like coercive oh, I don't know what's the word or how, or how I describe it it's like it's like so like demeaning right when you read that does it sound like the reason I bring these up is because I think uh, this is not a good way to deal with people uh, hopefully when society itself uh, develops if we still are around if there is no collapse uh, hopefully society well people in society will real, will sort of uh, understand how to interact with one another because I think at this at this historical moment uh, because of capitalism and the way uh, the horrors of capitalism and the, its impact on our psyche uh, uh, you know, people are just this is a don't treat me in a paternalistic fashion because I feel like you you like like that I feel you know it's like a do I don't like that statement I want to send this Okay, I guess it's very much good. Who am I sending this to? DMAT. DMAT. Alright. Um. Yeah. Okay, I think that's sent. And another thing is, I I I want to. I want to 
we have a new psych psychiatrist and psychologist. I just I don't I don't I, I want I want to see someone else. I think it's time I move to a different mental health team. I'm not happy with the my current team. So um, yeah, I want to move to a different team, different people. Uh, these days I'm like I just can't. I don't have much patience. I don't have much patience, so anyway, so I have to upload this uh, because I, I don't want to, I couldn't do a, a live video because, uh, well mainly because this, this keyboard wasn't working so I couldn't type in the title and uh, 